So today we're going to change the oil on the FZ07. I want to go a little into depth about oil in general. It's not really a bolt shit on series video, is it? You guys did want to see tutorials like this. We need some kind of intro. Jake's Moto Vlogging Channel. That'll work. The first thing we need to do is warm the bike up. Most people understand why, but I did have a few people that argue with me, which is why I, I want to make this video. They argued with me when I said to warm the bike up before, saying that, you know, oil is actually thinner when it's cool. And technically, that is correct with oil works these days. Chemically, it's actually thinner when it's cooler, so it gets the I'll talk more about that in a minute. And your engine's off. All the little bits of junk and crap that we want to get out of the oil, and one of the big reasons we change the oil, will fall and settle on whatever metal's underneath it. That's not always the oil pan. That's not always the bottom of the motor. It could be up in the valve cover, through the crankshaft, one of the many places oils travels in this bike. So by running it, we can sort of suspend everything in the middle of the oil so when it drains out, hopefully we get all the junk out with it. So let's warm the bike up real quick. Takes a minute for this thing to warm up. We're up to the thermostat temperature. That's what you can see when it kind of gets up to about 180, then it drops all of a sudden. That's because it's opening the thermostat and sucking a nice cool air from the radiator. I always like to throw some cardboard down just because you never know. You can get all sorts of oil pans. I always like using one of these just old cut up oil jugs right here for these motorcycles. Just cut the top off, shove that under. What's great too is when you want to dump this out, you have a end, you just unscrew it, you pour it into your bigger bucket or whatever you're going to take to the store to drain it. Now, also good to have some paper towels, some kind of solvent nearby. This is actually brake cleaner. It's pretty corrosive, so if you wipe something down with it, just be sure to wipe it off pretty quickly. The good thing about brake cleaner is it dries so fast, so you can usually get away with it. Drain bolt is literally right here on the very front of the motor. I've seen some people talk about this before, saying, I hate how Yamaha puts the drain bolt right there in the front and the filter. You're gonna smash it on something. What they don't know is I, almost every bike with a fairing on it has the same thing going right here. Now I'm using a 17 millimeter. I like to use a six-sided. The only 17 millimeter uh, six-sided socket I have is actually an impact socket, so I have to use this big wrench here, which I normally would tell you, no, don't do that. Because when people see these big wrenches, when they go to tighten things on, they tend to crank down on them. You just don't do that. You'll see me when I tighten it up. I'm going to be holding it up here for a reason. You could put some gloves on, but I think it's fine. It's supposed to get dirty. It's not a big deal. Now, one thing that's nice to look at right here, you got to see if your crush washer is on your uh, is sticking to your motor or staying on the bolt. In this case, it seems to be stuck to the bolt. If it was stuck to the motor before I get all the way off, I usually like to get my finger down there and try to flick it back forward because what ends up happening is the oil's dumping. At some point, it'll fall off into your thing, which isn't the worst thing. There's actually a handful of crush washers down in there, but it's just something I like to do. And I also, right before I take this off, I'm gonna hold this end up. That's another reason why it's nice to use these, you get a grip, because there's a good chance this is gonna try to shoot forward. So holding it by this and being ready for that is not a bad idea go. Since this is still right under a thousand miles, uh, my philosophy for oil is a little bit different. Now, first of all, I believe in the hard break and I have a whole video where I talk in detail about that. I suggest you go check that out. My oil change intervals for that under 1,000 miles are a little bit shorter. I did it around 100 miles. I think I changed it again right before about 400, 500 miles. That's kind of on its third oil change here, right before 1,000. Now, up until then, I just put a, a regular conventional. I put Yama Lube in it. Now I'm going to actually switch to a synthetic. That's just my thinking. You don't have to follow that. You know, everyone's got a different opinion and everyone is very, oh, my opinion is best. I like to do a little more frequent oil changes during the break in. I know that sounds like a pain in the ass to allow you to change your oil that often, but it's just while we're in break in. Now that I'm gonna consider myself outside of break in, I'll be going to a more normal uh, by the book oil change uh, intervals. I still might do it a little bit early. You really, remember, you're not gonna hurt anything by going earlier. You're not gonna damage the motor. As far as what oil you use and what you don't use, I like a synthetic oil once we're past break in. It's just so slick and you've got such hardened uh, cylinders in these things now. The cylinder walls are plated. The exact synthetic you use, again, people will get real hung up on this one or that one. Uh, a while back, I tried uh, Ames oil in my WR450 and I used to always tell people, you don't need that high dollar Ames oil. And I had to put my own foot in my mouth because as soon as I put it in there, I noticed a big difference. A WR holds a little over a quart of oil and you have to change it all the time. And it's very apparent when it's going bad very quickly. Just 
the way it shifts, the way it wants to start. When I'm trying to start the bike, if it's in gear and I pull the clutch all the way in, it's still, the clutch is still dragging just a hair, which means whether I'm using the electric or the kicker, it's really hard to get it to fire up. It just seems to slow it down just enough that the bike doesn't want to kick over. Now I switched to that Ames oil and found it didn't seem to matter so much if it was in gear as long as I pulled the clutch in all the way, I could get it to fire up no problem. In traffic or riding around in the trails and stuff, I would see very quickly the water temperature shooting right over 200 degrees real fast. Since I went to Ames Oil, it's slowed way down. It seems to uh, take a lot longer for it to overheat now. You have two numbers on the bottle. Uh, the first one, and it's got like a W next to it. That's its cold weight. It's cold viscosity, I should say. It seems backwards that oil would be thinner when it's cold and thicker when it's warmed up. And normally it would be, but there's some chemical engineering going on in there which makes it that way. And that's important just because it helps get oil to all the parts of the motor quickly. That's what you want to do when you start it up. And then as the engine warms up, it comes closer to that operating temperature. This is one of the big reasons it's very important to let your engines warm up. Your engine doesn't actually have the best protection when that oil's uh, cold, basically. It needs, to, it needs to get to temperature and that'll give a better protection. As far as what weight you use, I would say go look at what your manufacturer recommends. There's actually a range of temperatures they always have for your bikes. The filter is close enough to the drain bolt that I can kind of just leave the bolt off right now and let this thing continue to drip. Scoot that down like that for a moment. I'm actually going to be changing this one out for a K&N one. I don't know what size it is, but it has a uh, basically a nut shape in the front here so you can just use a socket to get it off in the future. Let that run for a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to get this crush washer off my drain bolt and clean it up a little bit. Our new filter, they come with this plastic on here. Normally under this plastic there'll be a little bit of like sort of goop already on here. Yeah, there's a little bit, but I still always like to put a little ring of oil on here. We do that so that the seal doesn't get sort of smushed or cut. You can just take some oil right off of this, doesn't matter. I don't like reaching my finger down into the old stuff. I mean, this is old stuff too, but it's not in there with that. Also, this end here, this is what I was talking about. This end has got a, a bolt style thing on there. That's actually a 17 millimeter. That's super convenient. Putting it on though, I just hand tighten them. It's really for taking it off. You don't need to be cranking down on this to put it on. Uh, also, you'll notice I just put it on without any oil inside of it. A lot of people will get mad at me for doing that because technically, you should try to fill these up when you can. As soon as I turn it over to screw it in, a bunch of it's just gonna try to dump out. Uh, it's just a pain in the ass. It means for a moment starting it, it'll have to fill this filter, then fill the bike with oil. The engine was just running, it's up to temperature still. Uh, there's still residual oil throughout the motor, and as long as we're letting it sit here and idle, I mean, if I fired it up and put it in gear right, right away and took off, that wouldn't be great, but it'll be all right, don't worry. Okay, drain bolt here. So many people don't like replacing these crush washers. They just think, ah, the one on there is fine. I've been using it forever. Dude, just go get a pack of them. I bought this entire little pack of them for just a few bucks off Amazon. Don't buy a pack of them. You'll do it one time. The next time you'll be like, oh shit, I forgot that, that crush washer. Fuck it, it'll be fine. Just get a fucking crush washer. If you're kind of confused on what these crush washers do, they're a soft metal, and when you tighten them up, they sort of smash and create a perfect seal against the two surfaces. Good to get you a funnel for this part. If you're gonna sit here and try to do this, you're gonna make a big mess, I promise you. According to the manual, it says if you're doing a filter with the oil change, it's 2.75 quarts of oil. I'll dump it a little bit at a time, and then the thing is, your sight glass is down here. What you really need to do to check your sight glass is you need to make sure the bike is level. I like to hold it up here like this. People are really scared to take their bike off kickstand, but I mean, look, if it goes over a little bit, I mean, it's not like it's going to just fall out of my arms. I can easily pull it back down. I've got the kickstand down here. It's not a big deal. I've got stands for it. I could put underneath it, but I was fine because that jacks the rear up a little bit. It gives you sort of a false reading. You really want it to be very level. On kickstand, it looks it looks over full. Take it off kickstand and put it where it feels level, about right exactly where you want to have it. So it looks like it's good. That filter is not full of oil. This is again why it's so important to make sure you're checking it off kickstand because. Uh, like I said, when I had it on kickstand earlier, this thing looked completely full. Now that I've ran it for a second, let the oil resettle, as you can see, it actually looks like it's perfect, but we're on the kickstand. We're low. Now, some people would say, well, why don't you just go ahead and put that extra amount beforehand? Well, we don't want to overfill it. So the oil 
change is not really that hard to do. The main thing is just getting down on your hands and easy doing it. Uh, you'll get a little bit dirty, not a big deal. I don't even really bother ever wearing gloves when I do these things. Sometimes it is nice if the engine's real hot, like middle of summer, just to keep yourself more from burning yourself and get a little oil on there. Because when the oil does get on your skin and it's really hot, it doesn't just wipe off as easy as you think it does. The two biggest things that you can do to make an engine last a really long time, well, besides the hard braking too, I know it makes people crazy, but <laughs> changing your oil when needed or more often, and letting your bike warm up. If you can do those two things, you should have a very long lasting bike. I ripped the shit out of every bike I've ever owned and they've always been fine because I use that method. If you guys like these sort of tech videos, let me know in the comments below. We'll just do a few little more maintenance things like this from time to time. See you on the next one. Stop it. Get some help. I don't think the I school bus is that tall. This is a bit on the rich side. Uh, they didn't actually have Those, an exact the map. Um, do not look big enough for, for that size of thing so right there. I'm using a, uh, what is it, for an Akrapovich. Oh, Can we give me a hard time when I say it wrong? Oh, shit! Akrapovich? 